Hey everyone, Dr. Kelly Surratt. I am at Super Training Gym and we're doing a real life breakdown. Now, explain who you are, what's going on, introduce yourself to all, all the people. I am Cade Proctor. I am a power lifter out of Strong Barbell Club, which is in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, I, the last meet I was in was a showdown meet. Um, squatted 804, bench 501, deadlifted 804, um, 2110 total. <laughs> but, not bad, not bad. Well, but, what's going on? Uh, so I've been having like some tendonitis, some elbow issues. Um, I think it stems from just like heavy squats, um, the chronic overuse of just having heavy bar on you, on your back, um, can put a lot of pressure on your elbows. So I kind of wanted to just pick his brain to see what I could do, maybe some exercises I could do at home to kind of fix that. So let's, let's break this down. So how long has it been hurting the elbow? Uh, probably about a year, a I would year. say. So when we hear the word tendonitis, itis means acute inflammatory response. That's usually three to 13 days. Okay. Does this sound like an itis to you? Nope. No, this is not an itis. So we have this chronic elbow pain. And what happens is just for all of us who kind of battle these positions, what you think is part of the game, mm -hmm. right? If I'm going to put seven, 800 pounds on my back regularly, my elbows hurt. Now, do they hurt right away? No, it's usually about like two days later. I would say you mean like doms, you get like elbow doms yeah, from squatting. Yeah, like doms. Yep. I would say about two days later, and it's usually like before I go to bed. So every night <clears throat> uh, I'm getting ready for bed, and then it's like a pulsating in my elbows, like right where the brachialis ends, um, right near my. So elbow. pro tip: don't go to bed. <laughs> I guess so. I mean, just you know, like don't sober up. It's like the same idea, right? You'll never be hungover. Well, let's talk about um, what the position is, right? So. If we're getting under the bar, let's, let's take a look. And this okay. is an empty bar, and sometimes my strength athletes need a little bit extra load to actually set the bar, but, but we're gonna see what it looks like right now, okay? So show me what it looks like. Pretty fan, dude, I love how this just like set it in there. Get so it. usually I'll set it in like this. And then... Excellent, okay. So what we wanna do is try to understand what the heck is going on, right? And what we're thinking here is, okay, go ahead and rack that so you can get out of that shape. Cool. What is the elbow prep going in? So one of the th mistakes that we see or errors sometimes is that you do a lot of prep for your lower body. I know because it's what it takes, even just to put on the briefs is like a, a workout, right? So tell me how you get your elbows prepped for squatting. Um. Honestly, not a lot of prep for my elbows for squatting. Look so. at me, look back here at the camera. <laughs> so this is really common in a lot of our athletes who thinking, hey, we're prepping underneath these other loads and the other tissues sometimes just kind of get neglected, right? Because on a bench day or an upper body day, I know that you're pretty immaculate about the way you're preparing for that, right? Exactly. Tissues are flushed and ready to go. So one of the things that any athlete can do if you've had this experience is, hey, there's, there's this thing from powerlifting, you may have heard of like tricep press downs, have you ever heard that before? Yep. You can do hundreds of them between sets. So one of the things we can do is just get the tissues better prepared for the load. So if we just took all of the mechanics out of it, preciousness, lack of range, whatever out of it, injury history, how do we better prepare the tissues for that elbow and getting a big ass pump before you hand would be a good way to do it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So step one. Without changing anything, can we have the tissues engorged with blood, even a little blood flow restriction, little occlusion training on the upper body. And I'm just talking about not going crazy, but just to get a gigantic pump. And we've seen that with our major league pitchers. We've seen that with our, our war fighters. We, a lot of times we're just not preparing the ligaments and tendons. Then we're actually putting them under pretty big isometric load in that position. And it's just like anything. Hey, we know that you should be able to do it cold, which is basically ostensibly what you're doing with your elbow. Handle 800 pounds and little jumps. You probably like, you know, probably go 225, 700, 800 as your jumps, right? <laughs> no. So the Absolutely idea here not. though is number one, can we better prep the tissues? And that just may mean getting a big sweat, but specifically work on getting a, a pump around the joint. Two, let's talk about just some basic range of motion. Come on over here. Okay. So when we're looking at supporting the bar, ideally we'd love to have full grip on the bar. Yeah. Right? And one of the reasons we want full grip is it makes that elbow more stable. So when we have the thumb involved, so check this out. I want you to grab my hand. Okay. And I want you to rip it off, tear it off. Just like No, wait, 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 wait. You don't get to use your thumb this time. Oh, okay. Go ahead and tear it off again. Can't. Can't. So one of the th issues with a lot of our strength athletes 
is that we have to be in positions to get on that bar, but we can't create the kind of rotation or the kind of stability through the system, right? Do you bench with open thumb or use your thumb? Closed. Use closed. Why? More stability. More stability safer. and you're safer, right? Yeah, scary. Yet we, <laughs> if I don't. I don't, I don't this, this is super cool. Yeah, no. And, uh, but the idea here is we know that you can create a better, more stable whole system through the thing. So we just apply that. So how do we get the body into a position where we can at least start to sneak in thumb? So some technique ideas, mm -hmm. but really what we're asking is, are there, are there issues in the shoulder? And remember, powerlifting is a specific enough sport that we may never be full range, but we don't have to be full range. We just have to chase full range. Does that make sense? So get on your back. Let's take a look. Is it your left side or your right side? Uh, usually it's my right. You look okay, so scoot over a little bit. Let's take a look at your right side. So one of the positions that we want to identify is out here to the side. And so what you're seeing is we call this the hang shape. So this is a front rack shape because it's where I'm holding a bar in a front rack position. And a start of a bench press would be a long lever front rack, right? Because we're just orientation of the shoulder. Out to the side is what we call our hang shape. And in this situation, we call it the hang because this is where I'd be pulling from the floor. But the whole arc of motion is the key here. And so one of the things we're looking at and tend to see in elbow dysfunction is that if we have an athlete who be missing some of the arc of motion, then the elbow has to deal with that limitation. You're, you maxed out your wrist the way you're holding the bar because it's just unnatural to hold that bar in that position at that size. Then we all suddenly have maybe a little bit of a stiff shoulder and the elbow is doing all the work to kind of connect the two. Does that make sense? You see the same thing when people have knee issues, ankle range of motion restriction, hip range of motion restriction, knee is making up for the, the battle in between. So if you scoot over just a smidge, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this range of motion, this arc in the shoulder here. So if I pin his shoulder down, this is his end of his arc of range, right? And believe it or not, this is actually pretty decent, right? Yeah. But still missing 50%. I wanna see the arc of the hand basically go to about the hip without any forward translation in the shoulder here. So one of the things that happens is, I mean, if I come this direction, do you see that we've got a ton of external rotation here? So that can't be the issue. Yeah. What we're looking at is, a, is his ability to create good rotational stability. And if he's missing one side, then the shoulder tends to come forward a little bit. And once again, we're kind of caught where that elbow's gotta make, make, kind of make it up for it, right? So one of the things that we can do then is just return his internal rotation. Now, the key here is we see this also show up in bench. If I can't have internal rotation and full extension, then the shoulder starts to come forward as a compensation mechanism for it, right? This is, if this is why we love floor pressing and we love board pressing, forces us to or be able to maintain the range without this translation forward. And because that's, that's where we get into problems. And it's not you, I'm not talking about this as a bench issue, but benching, will necessarily take away your shoulder extension because your body's so good at hanging on the lat to be able to press off the lat that that shoulder will get stiff. And one of the ways that we can improve the load on the, the elbow here is to just address the fascia. Now, the key here is to see that we've got muscle and connective tissue and if we just have a little bit of restoration of those positions, and this can be a barbell laying here, having a friend or a super friend lay on this. You can even help me with that internal rotation, just internally rotate as I do it. Just bring your hand to the table. So he's just helping and I'm assisting. And all I'm doing is holding this tissue down. His shoulder's over here. I'm not even up in the shoulder. I'm just on the deltoid and looking at some of this tissue in this system. And one of the things you described is, hey, I feel like some of my, my arm musculature coming mm -hmm. in here, right? So yeah. we're just going upstream and making sure that that tissue system is a little bit more effective. Does that make sense? So that'd be number two, I'd kind of keep an eye on. And again, we may never need full range of motion here. We may never get it because he's so strong benching five, but we don't have to have it. We just have to chase it. Improving the mechanics a little bit is enough for the brain to unload or think it's a different position. Also, it's enough for you just to have a little bit of breathing room, right? So a combination between let's get pumped up before, let's get a big pump. Second, let's just keep an eye on this you know, it can make a big difference. And lastly, I think it's, it's worth looking at um, is having a conversation about how you take care 
of the biceps. So what's the last time you mobilized biceps and forearm? Like train them separately? Mobilized them, took care of them. Do you do anything for your quads or hamstrings? Yeah. So what do you do for your biceps? So this happens all the time, right? Where I'm like, hey, I don't know if you notice this, but you're a big, strong guy and your biceps are kind of huge. But because the arm doesn't give us very much grief, oftentimes our elbows maybe will have insertional problems with our benching, right? Because that's something we see in this community a lot. But when we look at the whole system, because if I went down and was like, hey, your knee hurts and your quads are stiff, you'd be like, hey, I'm gonna work on my quads and improve my knee, right? That makes sense. Stiff calves can affect knee pain. Stiff hamstrings can affect knee pain. So if we've got pain in and around the elbow, let's go ahead and spend a second addressing some of the soft tissues here. And an easy way to do that is grab a heavy barbell and just smash the crap out of the biceps in here. And you'll see that because these tissues, some of them are so hard working and they don't raise their hand very much and need a lot of attention, we don't give them a lot of attention because there's so many other things to work on. So working on placing that barbell here, placing that barbell here, will do a lot to restore the rotation of the wrist. So as notice that we're sort of working our way out. First thing is like, can we change the environmental behavior, get you pumped? Second, let's chase the rotation up here. And then one of the things that we see a lot of is because we're handling these loads, what ends up happening is that we start to spend time in this position, like I'm grabbing a bar, and we end up losing some of all the full rotation of the wrist in these positions. And so what we're really trying to do here is come back to that rotation idea where you're anchoring that thing down with a heavy barbell and then trying to add some rotation. One of my favorite drills to improve that, come on with me, right? Is gonna be a simple hang. And I don't give a crap that you can do a pull up, that has nothing to do, right? But let's take a position that forces you into the full end range position. So instead of being in this position, let's rotate it here. Just put your hands together on the bar for me. And then just lower yourself down to your knees, right? And, and then you can start to back that out and open. You don't even have to hang. But as he starts to open this up, like he was doing a chin, so start to back your hands, your knees away a little bit, just so that you're just opening that up like you were hanging, right? So suddenly you can see what's happening is he's already losing his pinky grip here, right? And that's not a strength problem. That's a, hey, I'm having a rotation problem. So when we look at some of our classic assistance work, some of the assistance work we were doing was about just keeping an eye on these rotational pieces. The Russians say the hands are clever, and what means is our hands will continue to solve that problem of lack of range until I start to lose the ability of the hand to solve that problem. Remember how you grip the bar, right? So the hand has lost its ability that puts it straight on the elbow. So starting to spend time in some of these positions where we're just hanging around on a pull-up bar or not even a full pull-up bar on a, a rack and just breathing and just putting the tissues under tension is an easy thing to do between sets to keep an eye on this, right? One of the ways that we can also do this, come on up, take that bar out of the rack for me, and then move your hands out to the grip and an underhand grip, but go all the way out to the ring, right? Now all I've done is force that full rotation and then do some curls all the way out the ring for me. And you can see here that at the bottom where he wants to go is here. So I'm gonna say go out a little bit wider, right? And all of a sudden, now I'm taking this tissue and forcing it into this fully externally rotated position. And you can start to feel that strain there, right? So easy pump out sets of 10 as a finisher. This isn't about getting stronger. This is just about elbow health. And keeping an eye on our rotation is the name of the game. And you'll notice that we're starting to build this case for having improved rotation. Does that make sense? So an easy yeah, finisher. Absolutely. Last thing, come on over here. So my friend Mark, I don't know if you've heard of Mark Bell, mm -hmm. <laughs> came with this thing called the Infinity Strap. So step on this side for me real quick. Gotcha. Now, the Infinity Strap just got these easy loops, but what's nice about that is you can hang it on, hook it on any of your rigs, and then all of a sudden, I've got a place to work on this rotation, but by taking the elbow out of it, forcing the elbow straight, now we can start to see this. So show me some rotation, grab that thing. Right? Oh, look what he did. Immediately he went to short lever. Uh-uh. Mm -hmm. Leave that elbow straight and rotate at the shoulder. Okay. So what's going on? So it's like this, right? 
And you can see that some of this is, hey, go ahead and put a little more load into it, okay. right? Now show me that rotation. Good. And just getting his brain to remember, how do I create rotation? And there's this thing we have called the super friend. It's like the super gym. If my super friend came up, go ahead and rotate again, and I just gave him a little cue there at the end range, right? What is that? Bend over. Quit that. Now hold that position. Go ahead and go further out. Retract the scap further out. Now he's got to maintain this isometric. He's cueing himself. So now we've got some better rotation at the wrist. We've got elbows that are pumped. We've got a rotation capacity at the shoulder. Then some simple priming. And the more effective he is, turning sideways, show me that same rotation. Go ahead and break it again and just and rotate again. Come out, rotate back in. Oh, don't overextend. Okay. Rotate, rotate, rotate. And you can see that because of the kinds of training we're doing, it's easy to lose that, that, that idea, right? So simple ideas to get your rotation primed, which we oftentimes don't think about before squats. Why would right. I think about rotation? I'm worried about my, my legs today and dying under this bar. But if we can prep the tissues, work on this rotation, suddenly the work I'm doing in the squat setup helps the bench the next day. And that's the game. That's awesome. Thank you so much. No worries. Super train, Jim. Race day.